Hey everybody, this is Steven Totillo from Kotaku, and you are looking at, well, I think you can figure out from the title screen, Paper Mario Color Splash. An upcoming game for the Wii U, one of the few upcoming Wii U games that uh, will still be upcoming because the system is in its twilight. And this winds up being the big release for Nintendo for the fall season. They're kind of keeping it quiet as they, I guess, prepare for the launch of the Nintendo NX system, systems, whatever that will be in March. You know, the big Zelda game people thought would be the big fall game of this year is not coming out. The reason we're sitting on this is not coming out until March. Uh, the reason we're sitting on this title screen for a bit is that because this is a pre-release game, Nintendo usually has some strings attached. And so they say we can only live stream 20 minutes from fairly early in the game. We're going to play something that I haven't played before, which is I'm just very early in the game. But I figure this isn't running down the clock right here so that I can give you a little bit of setup. Paper Mario Color Splash is uh, the latest in a long line of Paper Mario role-playing games. You know, the sort of series has its roots and its heritage. Oh, I think we might be going to an attract mode now. Hopefully that doesn't count either. Or just night mode. Good. Uh, it has its heritage all the way back to the Super Nintendo game, uh, Paper Mario, or excuse me, Super Mario RPG. Uh, but m I think you might trace a more direct line starting with... Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64, which was very well received and very much a role-playing game with stats and, and sort of partner characters and whatnot, but with more of an action-style gameplay to it. That was followed on by a GameCube game that's much loved called uh, Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. And then the series began to make some weird turns, and this is part of the weird turn. Um, they went to more of almost like a platformer with Super Paper Mario on the Wii, and then they went to uh, Paper Mario... And the, uh, the Something Stars, which I'm totally drawing a blank on what the actual official name was it now, um, Sticker Star, Paper Mario Sticker Star, which was on the 3DS and was very controversial. Uh, the only Mario-related role-playing game that I can think of that has kind of a negative reputation as, as the sort of main reputation that it, that it has. And it's because people felt like it was uh, uh, not enough of a role-playing game, not enough of a story, notoriously. People... Uh, blame Shigeru Miyamoto, who some of the developers have said um, that, he, that Miyamoto, the, the great game designer at Nintendo, had asked for a story to be de-emphasized. And really, the role-playing game aspect of this series has been de-emphasized. And you'll see that here as well. When I interviewed the developers at E3, they called it more of an action-adventure game and were not hiding the fact that, that they have de-emphasized uh, role-playing game act acts uh, Attributes, attributes. But anyway, let's, uh, before I bore you to tears with this title screen, let's jump into the game. I'll show you the world map. And let's take a look into there and we'll get, this, get a sense of how this game is shaped. And we're going to zoom a bit out. And um, I so you can see that I we have a nice big world to explore and some nodes that represent levels, which is similar to what Sticker Star had. And right now we can't get through the red dot over here, which is what I want to do because I need these three like uh, special keys or something to get to the Crimson Tower. So we're looking for access there. And I th think the best level to go to next is going to be Daffodil Peak. So we're going to jump in. So you play as Mario throughout the game, shocker. And unlike the early Paper Mario games, much to the hardcore fans' dismay, there are not Paper, uh, partner characters. There's this paint bucket called Huey. He sticks around and, and helps you out, and he can give you advice. But the, you're mostly by yourself. You have a hammer that can knock into things and collect paint for them. Or if you see white spots, as you saw earlier, I can use my hammer to well, uh, color things in. All right, here's Huey. And we'll move through the text as fast as possible. The paper aesthetics are fantastic. This is the you know most powerful system to have run a Paper Mario game uh, to date. And so you see something that really conveys the cardboardness of the door and the paperness of Mario and all that. So here's another place where it's a white spot. And if I color it in, it auto selects the color. Uh, it fills out the color. When I'm doing the color thing, I'm draining color from the red, blue, and yellow in the top left. And I'm also then refilling it when I get color splotches here. It's a nice little mechanic here. I'm disappointed and, and, and sorry to tell you, but that you don't really get much for coloring in the whole world. You get, uh, if you 100% the world in terms of color spots, you may uncover some hidden stuff, but for the most part, oh, I thought maybe that was a hidden spot right there. 
Uh, for the most part, you just, I think, unlock music or something like that. It's just like, I don't think there's a major payoff, which is disappointing. Um, the game's pretty funny. It's, it's really well written, and hopefully you'll get some of that from some of the Toad talk. Uh, we'll see. Well, that wasn't a joke. Wow, Toad's pretty moody this game. Huh? Yeah, we got Frank back, yeah. everybody. Nice everybody guy. everybody's favorite second voice. I always forget to introduce <laughs> Frank. I'm so okay, sorry. No I'm so sorry. I just wanted to comment on Goth Toad. <laughs> yeah, well I was telling you to get ready for all this humor and um now instead we have really some sadness here. Oh, I keep hitting the uh, the cutout button by accident. So there is a mechanic where you can try to actually cut parts of the paper out. As you see, I don't have to perfectly color between the lines. Oh good. I was never really good at that. <laughs> yeah. I'm picking up cards because, uh, sorry to those who hated it, the card-based battle system of uh, Sticker Star is back. And you are, therefore, when uh, in battles, you are not leveling up. Uh, you are just gaining more cards as you explore the world. You are gaining, as you, as you beat guys, the ability to carry more paint. Uh, oh, my goodness. Am I not supposed to be able to get up there? Oh, no. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm keeping my eye off the comments, but what I'm going to do at some point is um, pause the game so that we're not running down the live stream clock, and I'll try to answer some of your guys' questions because I'm sure you have them since this is an upcoming game. And people tend to uh, have a lot of questions about games that are not yet released. When I interviewed the developers back in June at E3, they were telling me the game was already done. Oh, okay. Here we go. But Nintendo tends to finish games early, and I think they've been trying to stretch out the Wii U lifespan. Uh, everything colored in now? Come on, dude, we good? Uh, <laughs> what are the messed up spots? Let's see. Oh, under the, under the floor mat here. Can we pull this? Uh, there we go. What else, what else, what else? Hmm. hmm. Oh man, this is gonna suck if this is how we- <laughs> 20 minutes of this. <laughs> 20 minutes of being in this room. Oh, this is new. All right, let's unfurl. I've never seen a question mark exclamation point at the same time on a block. This is this is new territory for a Paper Mario game. Uh, 20 seconds. Wait, what? What? What, <laughs> what does this mean? Wait, what? What am I unfurling? Should I have stayed inside? Uh, unfurl the painting, right? I don't know what. Uh, I don't really know. Oh, well, maybe this thing that had the mark on it. Nintendo's pretty forgiving with the learning curve on these kind of games, I would say. Yeah. Here we go. Unfurl. <laughs> okay, I was just randomly hammering. I didn't think that was actually going to work. Toad. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that was going to work. Okay, we got him, we got him a chair. Okay, well that's, that's neat, okay. Now time to paint it. Yeah, so the bad guys in the beginning of the game have uh, drained color from the world. It fe I feel like they're, they're borrowing from Splatoon's splash physics, or at least splash graphics. All right, all right Toad, make some jokes now. I told these people that you guys were funny. Not funny? Not funny? <laughs> Oh, there you go. On the house, so to speak. Ha, 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 <laughs> the game ha. is genuinely funny, but I, I, <laughs> it's like, you know, you, it can't be funny on command. It just doesn't work that well. And back outside, here we go. Notice, because I did a lot of hammering, uh, that my color meters are not all the way full. I was saying that it auto-selects the color, so there it... Well, it doesn't really, 
I don't know how it determines right now since it doesn't need to color anything in, but if you were, say, coloring in a lot of blue stuff because you're trying to fill out, I don't know, a blue wall or something like that, then you would be losing a lot more blue color. And then if you need blue color elsewhere, you would have a problem. I love how you were just trying to make Mario's world like a Jackson Pollock over there. Yeah, and it actually stays. If you go back to some of the areas, I think the color splotches save. I haven't been reading this text. It was probably hilarious. The goal of any of these uh, discrete levels that you're in, like Sticker Star, is to find a star at the end or somewhere in the world, and there's often more than one in the game world. So enemies, there's no random encounter, so you do see the enemies in the game world. And let's actually... Uh, okay. So the more cards I get, the more options we're gonna have in battle. And let's... If I hit him with a hammer in advance, they would've taken some damage. So I think I haven't fought one of these spiky guys before. So you can't, you're not gonna be able to see any of some of this, I think, unless I can switch the screen, which I don't think is possible. So just imagine, if you will, I'll describe it to you. On the Wii U gamepad, which is the controller that has the screen in it, I can see an array of cards at the bottom, and I'm going through them now. All you're seeing is the enemies, and they sometimes even make jokes while waiting. So I'm looking at cards like a hammer, a fire flower. I'm just gonna take, uh, I can place two cards because of how far in I've played. So I'm gonna put two cards on my hand. One is gonna be a damaged hammer, which is a little bit weak. And the other one's gonna be a full hammer, but that card is black and white. And then I'm gonna say my cards are ready. The black and white card I'm gonna fill in with paint, which is gonna drain my paint meter a little. That makes the card more powerful. And then I'm gonna say done painting and I'm going to flick the cards into action. And then it's gonna be the typical time-based commands. Color draining is a sign of damage. If I held a little longer, I would have, and I was too slow there. So I, you hit the button at the right time, you get a block, you get the rhythm of it, and if you hit on the attack at the right time, you can get up to an excellent, which, uh, let's see if we can get it this time. Oh, I got a great, okay, so better. So a lot of that is happening on the gamepad screen, which uh, you guys watching can't see. For those coming in late, we're playing uh, Paper Mario Color Splash for the Wii U comes out on October, what is that, 6th, 7th, Frank? What was it? 7th. 7th, Seventh. Seventh. Friday. Frank knows the dates. He's got the calendar handy. And we are on a 20-minute timer, and we're almost halfway through that. So I'm trying to sh get through this as fast as possible, so maybe not color as many things in. Get some more cards, though. So Here cards, is huh? Is this uh, Paper Mario The Gathering? Well, this is the, so they did this before, and people got annoyed about it because it's... The positive way of looking at it is that it takes away the idea of stat grinding that, that sort of dominates your f the flow of a lot of RPGs. And instead, it's really skill-based from the get-go. So, you know, being able to use these cards well. Uh, I'll tell you guys, by the way, the problem I have right now is I have a lot of mushroom, like uh, life health filling and life restoring, color restoring cards, but I don't actually have a lot of offense cards. I do have a lemon uh, and I have a fan because I also have those cards that are back. I've got a fire flower that I'm not very good at using. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna use, let me use big big jump. No, I'm gonna use line, line jump. And I'm going to use spike helmet. I gotta color in line jump. So I'm coloring in with blue. So my blue paint will be diminished. And then I'm flicking the cards into action. Line jump, here we go. And I only got one jump on that. Okay, I, got the, I don't not have the timing mastered on these yet. And I tried to hit the spike them up, but it didn't work. So you see they get drained of color as they're taking damage. So I keep the spike hat, which is good to know. Uh, it's strategic in that you, if you put the cards into action, you, um, even if you don't need them because you've killed the enemies with just one card, you still lose the card, which some might find annoying, but it does add some strategy. Oh. There we go, I got the timing on that right at least. Um, the uh, the shell guy, once he's knocked into a shell, the Koopa, you just kick him and he knocks into enemies. So in that case, the issue there was that there were no other ground enemies, so that didn't really help. So there's some strategy to the battling. I needed the KO hammer. Uh, should we fight him? No, let's move on. Wait, what? 
battle inside the pipe. That's a new one. That is a new one. Frank confirms. Yeah. That is a new one. I've been playing Mario games since I've been a small child, and I've never once battled inside a pipe. Okay, so I'm just going to use the KO hammer because I may get him with one hit, and I don't, I don't have a ton of cards. So let's see. Strategy. Still only getting the greats. I don't have my nerve to, to wait long enough. But that, that was enough. So apparently when you do the boss battles, um, it's very helpful to see the boss's relative health by just seeing how much color has been drained from his paper self. I don't... Which a lot of RPGs don't really give you an indication of max HP on the bosses. Yeah, so it's, it's actually helpful. It looks, I'm thinking I can go behind there, right? Yeah. So normally I would be obsessive compulsively. Uh, oh, what's going on up there? Uh, this looks dirty. Um, oh boy, I don't. This game is rated uh, M. What is that? Normally I would be obsessively filling in all the color, even if I, as I told you, the rewards don't seem to be that amazing. But in this case, I just want to move further ahead in the level because it would be lovely if we could finish this level of Paper Mario Color Splash. Um, didn't even register there. Oh well. Yeah, I don't know what that uh, what that moaning and groaning is that's happening down there. Oh, oh no, no, run away from battle. Uh, so yeah, I like the look of the game. In fact, you know what? I am going to, how are we doing on time? Oh, we should check out what that. Six minutes, six minutes on gameplay. Okay, so we're probably gonna pause in a little bit. What happens here? Nothing. Probably because I need one of those special new blocks that they just introduced me to. This is very early on in the game. Um, where would we get an unfurl block from? Because if it's gonna be on a 20 second timer, it wouldn't be that far away, right? Yeah, the level transition alone is almost 20 seconds on side. It's not that slow. It's a lot better than some of the games we played. Yep, yep. Oh, they shortened those record load times. They they patched it. That's good. So now instead of two minutes, it's one minute. <laughs> Battlefront's still pretty bad though. <laughs> oh yeah, I got to check in with EA about that. I've seen other people talking about that now too. So maybe the maybe the block that I need is further. Over here. Let's see what's going on. No. Blaze hammer. Good. Okay. The look of this game is fantastic. The gameplay may still be controversial, but yeah, we gotta use the, sh the blaze hammer, right? And let's just use the blaze hammer. My blue paint is getting low, according to this. I don't know if people have noticed that. I flick it. I'm not using touch controls, I'm using button controls, which makes the card selection a little bit, a little bit easier. Wait, did, how did that not do anything? Yeah. Blaze hammer, and these guys are made of paper, and now I'm getting just beat down by all these shy guys. Yeah. It's brutal. Wait, why didn't Blaze Hammer do anything? I don't remember what E Hammer does. That's for, that was in the other games. Are Shy Guys like did I did I miss, forget something about Mario lore or Shy Guys Invincible from Hammers? No. <laughs> shy Guys were what originally Mario Two, which yeah. Well, I mean, no there's, no, in there's that no, game, no vegetable picking. There's no vegetable card, right? Yeah, there's no vegetable picking in this game, unfortunately, not yet. I'm waiting to see somebody bring that back into a Mario game. All right, so hammer and fire flower. Let's see what we do. Just, wait, what is? What am I getting wrong here? Maybe I was getting. Maybe I was, uh, was killing the other, the other paper. Oh, that's versions. right. Looks like there's a few of them. Yeah, You've got, stack. You got one of them at least with the fire flower. Yeah. All right. I just do not have a lot of jump cards. This is. Yeah, I have a terrible array of cards now. I've got a fan, two mushrooms, two one-up mushrooms, a big jump, a lemon. Another mushroom, an eek hammer, and a hammer. Uh, let's just do hammer and eek hammer. I'm, I'm gonna be almost out of offense, offensive cards after this. There's a store you can go to to buy them. There's also a one-time spin of a wheel that you can do. I would be, I would, I should be doing it. Ugh, too slow on the excellence there. We only have one guy left. So this time I'm gonna do the spin. So six shy guys. Battle spin. So I only have one uh, one guy left, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, and I got to jump. Okay. Got a jump card. All right. Yeah. 
There we go. All right. See you, shy guys. And lots of color to pick up, a little bit of the hammer icon, which extends. I've almost leveled up the hammer to carry more paint. There's stuff over here to hit. Oh, and there's, oh, there's the your, there's your my block. block. Uh, fall down? No. Down the pipe. No? Yeah, pipe. It's weird that when pushing down does not make him go down the pipe. It's that goes against again every uh, every Mario. Yeah, see, down the pipe the went the wrong way. Down the pipe went over there. Huh. Uh, not that. Back here. There we go. Ah. Okay, so then I'm gonna be running up to the left with it. And then. There we go. Okay. That's a different kind of pipe. Nice. And we've got, uh, what's his face? The Magic Koopa? And a weird, colorful door there, too. I'm going to pause the game now, and we're going to essentially pause the clock on the on the game to see what you guys are saying about Paper Mario Color Splash. And let's take a look and see. if Folks, if you have questions about the game, I'm happy to answer them, and then we'll go and play. I think, we're, I think we have a minute 15 left uh, of streaming time, but I'd be happy to answer, uh, answer any questions. So shoot some questions into the comments right now. I'm going to scroll back and see if there's any that you've already asked that uh, I can answer for you that are already in there, but I'm happy to see what I can tell you. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Is the color their health bar? Uh, the color, no, the, um, actually, I don't know how you, you die. No, you have HP, you have HP. You have 50 out of 50 so far, and, and that goes down, so you take damage that way. The color is the ability to restore color to the world, which fills it out, which is what gets you cards, other than having to spend money on cards. Uh, with, and the cards are things you need for battle. So um, that's what the color stuff does, not a health bar. What else? Questions. Can you customize your deck? Um, you can hit a sort button, and it'll arrange the, the deck of cards in um, basically group cluster similar cards together. You can buy cards. Uh, I don't know that beyond that there's much customization that you can do. Like I didn't see like custom card backs or anything like that. Um, is the is it Sticker Star 2? In many ways, yes. Um, it's the same development team. This is what they went on to make immediately afterward. When I interviewed them at E3, they were aware of criticism that that game did not have enough story to it. And so they said there's more of a story here, which is sort of true, but I'm not exactly getting pulled in. Frankly, the story is, to me is one of the most disappointing aspects of the game because currently I'm in a world that's just full of toads. And while they give them a lot of funny lines... I just don't find the personalities of the Toads that interesting. And I'm also just off of playing a Mario and Luigi game recently, which are also full of Toads. And it would be nice to see them explore other characters in the in the Mario-verse. Uh, so, yeah. But many ways, Sticker Star 2. Do you gain XP? No, you don't. Um, the only thing that you're gaining, which is a little bit different than Sticker Star, is after battles, you may have noticed that in addition to paint color dropping, little globs of paint color, there were also some little hammers dropping, little cardboard hammers. And those, um, and if you scroll back and watch part of the live stream once this is archived, you can see this, um, those will extend the handle that uh, is part of the color meter. You can't really tell, but the color meter is supposed to be the, the head of a mallet. And when I pick up the um, hammer icons, you'll see the full meter including the handle that's jutting out to the right. So it's as if it's a hammer sideways. It gets hammered over to the left. And that will eventually fill up uh, like an XP, XP bar filling up. Once it does, you will see the number that represents the amount of paint that you can carry increase. And it's to your advantage to carry more color because when you're in battle, you're wanting to color in the cards in your hand because most many of the cards that you have don't have color and therefore are weaker until you color them in. You also want color in order to fill out colors of the world, which you guys saw from what we played so far. Some of it is uh, optional and doesn't really have much impact on gameplay, but some of it does, and some of it affects like the shape of the world. Not a ton of that. I, I wish there was more of that, but this is not like a, this is not like De Blob. Do you guys remember the series De Blob and De Blob Two, which was spelled D E Blob? I'm not being cool right now. It's not the Blob, but I'm like De Blob. It was called De Blob. 
Anyway, tangent. What other questions are you guys asking? Let's see. Um, who agrees that Thousand Year Door was the best one? Not me, because I thought that the end boss was too high level and required too much grinding. I preferred Paper Mario on the N64, which I thought was fantastic and funny and had a really good uh, mission flow to it. I do miss how in those earlier Paper Marios, there were like these interstitial moments where you played as Princess Peach and you were doing other stuff. In this game, I have maybe there'll be that between chapter breaks, but there hasn't really been anything in there. Uh, Paper Mario Harambe Splash, yes, that was the original title. I'm sure that's what your question was. Um, kill something for F's sake. Uh, uh, come on, man. I'm pausing the game because we're on a 20-minute limitation for what I can show you live stream. So, come on, you're killing me with your comment. Do you like it? I have mixed feelings. I like the look of the game a lot. I like the music. But the story is kind of like another kind of who cares in the Mario world. And I found that there's just, I mean, you don't really look for deep stories in any of the Mario role-playing games. But I would have liked something a little bit more than the toads are upset because their world has lost color because after a while it's boring to talk to all these toads about how their world has lost color. Uh, is this on the 3DS too? Or is this also on the 3DS? As far as I know, no, just for the Wii U. Uh, game, game, game. Good question. Um, uh, Cole Dilworth. I don't know what that question means. Um, so they changed a lot of what Paper Mario great. Uh, Daniel Ingram asks. Yeah, when I asked the lead producer, um, I, uh, the last name is Tabata, Risa Tabata, I think is her name. Uh, she said that basically Nintendo had seen a few years ago that they had these two different role-playing games related to Mario going concurrently, and they wanted to find ways to distinguish them. So what she says is we decided with, with our games to emphasize more of the action adventure and more of the humor aspects. Now, if you've played the Mario and Luigi series, I think you would know that those series also have a lot of humor in it and even have some action adventure. So I don't quite buy that that's a clean distinction, but they've definitely moved the Paper Mario series away from it so that it sits somewhere between being, I mean, it's not quite a Mario so it's a side scroller, but it somewhere exists between that and the kind of Mario and Luigi games. Is the game fun? Um, in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, yes, it's fun. In terms of is it fun to go into a battle and not have enough cards to do battle and know I have to go back out to the store, the in-game store, to buy some from the you know the Toad Merchant? No, that part of it is not fun. And so I think that they still are too stingy with the battle moves available to you. I guess people who are more into collecting more of the cards might feel otherwise. But I'm, kill I'm coloring most of the paint spots, which are the things that cause cards to pop up without you having to buy them. And I just still don't wind up with a lot of cards. I don't have enough for a lot of battles. So I'm actively avoiding battles. And I think if you're playing an RPG where before you've even gotten to the first boss battle, you're actively avoiding battles with the little guys. I mean, that's, uh, I don't know if that's such a great thing. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, we're, so we're paused here because we're on a 20 minute live stream limitation and we only have a minute and a half left. I think a minute 15 uh, to do. Um, so we're just talking right now about this all. Uh, not a fan of the no XP concept that makes combat almost entirely pointless. Arguably, uh, Gabriel Menard, having XP sometimes disguises the fact that battles can be pointless, right? I mean, that would be the counter argument that in most role playing games, while yes, you gain XP um, you, and you gain stats, the enemies level with you. And so you're kind of doing the same level of difficulty throughout the game. What's the point? It's kind of a statistical grind. Others would disagree, right? Ultimately, the most interesting combat involves strategy. And there is still strategy, as you probably picked up on or hopefully picked up on when I was playing this game here. But yes, oh, I'm seeing a lot of frowny faces in the stream right now. People are not liking what they're hearing. Um, People just can't, aren't very bad about listening comprehension, apparently. Oh, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> I how, do you, how do you level up? How do you level up? You don't level up. There's no leveling in this game. Sorry. Um, but yeah, any other questions about Paper Mario Color Splash before we dive in for the dramatic last one minute and 15 seconds of our live stream limitation? Looking for last bits of questions. So can you play? Yes, I'll play momentarily. Uh, level 100 versus level 1 equals no challenge. Uh, do enemies not scale at all in gameplay throughout the game here? Um, Gabrielle, I'm still very early on in the game, so I... I couldn't tell you. I mean, they're throwing more enemies at me at once. They've also increased my ability to bring, I, initially I could only bring one card into battle and now I'm bringing two cards into battle. As I was saying earlier in the stream, 
you once you put those cards into play for that turn, uh, the, the turn that you're taking in the battle, you can't get them back. And so if you've pl two cards into play and then you kill the enemies with the first card, the second card is gone. So there's some strategy there where I guess they're tempting you to put in a minimum amount of cards. Now, I could see this getting much more interesting in terms of strategy if I can play like three or four cards at a time and if I have a wide array of cards. One thing I don't remember being in Sticker Star, you guys could probably tell me if it was or not, is... Uh, I have cards that I can are basically enemies that I've defeated who I can summon. So I had a Koopa card and I had a Goomba card and I was able to put that card into play. I didn't have direct control, but then that Koopa ran off and like knocked into the enemies or the Goomba came in and attacked the enemies. Um, I do you do you enjoy it? Is it worth it? Guys, I'm only like two hours into the game, if that, and it's a you know supposedly a long quasi role playing game. So I couldn't tell you. I have these mixed feelings about it. I love the look. I'm intrigued by the way that they've tweaked the card-based gameplay, but I'm not sure the balance is right, and I'm a little bored by the story right now. So um, how much will you pay for the game? They sent me a copy of the game, so I'm not going to be paying for it, Mac. Uh, so uh, I, I'm not paying. I'm paying zero. Nintendo sent me the copy of the game. So here we go, folks. Buckle up. We're going to see what we can do in the next minute and 15 seconds. If we go a little over, don't tell anyone, okay? Here we go. All right, going through this pipe over here. Going to stop. Uh, should we fight this? Oh, oh, he, oh, Magic Koopa. Magic Koopa battle. Uh oh. Talk quickly. Okay. So if you're watching on the stream and you haven't picked up on this, the cards are on the gamepad screen so you can't see them. Uh, I'm going to play a mushroom card. Oh, oh no, he's, <laughs> Magic Koopa is on my gamepad. Time for a Koopa magic. What a tick. <laughs> what? What? Did, oh, he just ruined all my cards. Wait, he he erased my flea option, and he turned my cards all into worn-out jumps. Okay. <laughs> right? So I'll color those in. Actually, that might have given me more offense cards than I had. I'm playing these cards. Let's see how we do. All right. Killed him with an excellent. My button press timing was better there. Of course, as soon as I said that, I got, only got a great, not an excellent. Yeah, Magic Koopa actually did me a favor here, dummy. Now, I'm only putting one card into play now because I think that's all I'll need to kill him. And here we go, fight. And look at a nice there, but that's all I needed. So um, think about what some of the stuff I was saying, guys. Uh, hammer icons come out, and those help level up the hammer. We're just short of being able to level up to carry more than 220 paint. Paint globules as well. You see some of my paint is spent because I'm painting, filling in the cards as I play. We are, we're in overtime. Don't tell anyone. Shh. Oh, that was bad. How do we get, yeah, we want to get to that other thing, right? Uh, how about this way? There we go. I don't know what determined that it was going to ricochet back and forth. No, no, we don't have time for a battle. Fill this in. Oh. Well, folks, uh, we can only uh, tempt the fate of Nintendo so badly. We've got an unfurl marker. Or tempt the wrath of Nintendo. You know what I'm trying to say. I'm panicking because I'm out of time. And so we will not be able to, uh, we'll not be able to get to the unfurl block wherever it may be. That would most likely, I'm sure, turn this into the top of a pipe that would get us up there to the yellow toad and get us to the yellow star. So that's it. Uh, we'll have to call it a day in terms of Paper Mario Color Splash. I'm sure that Nintendo does not count me pausing on the game right now as part of the 20-minute timer. So I'm going to answer any final questions that you may have about Paper Mario Color Splash. So uh, let's see if there are any final questions. Will you pay $60 for it? Um, uh, no. They sent it to me. I would, would I pay $60 for it? Uh, I love, I love me some Nintendo published games and it would be sad to not have a cool Nintendo published game in the latter half of the year. It's kind of a tradition. I mean, back to like when I was getting F-Zero X to satisfy my jonesing for a big fall Nintendo 64 game, whatever year that was. 
Um, so yeah, I would I would buy it, but I also I mean we all have different um, economic situations where for some sixty dollars is the only amount they can spend on any games at all for their given month, and in the month of October uh, there might be other games for people to buy. If you only had a Wii U, there wouldn't be many for you to buy. So yeah, I would do it, but I buy a lot of games as is anyway. Um, most of my games these days are not sent to me by publishers or I just don't have the patience to wait for them to send and I buy it because I know that I can then apply it to work and that it'll be a good thing to cover uh, for you guys to see and hear. For example, Star Wars Battlefront that I streamed last week, I paid for that and all the DLC myself. So I paid the um, the season pass. I know the pain of season passes as much as you fine folks. Um, yes, it does look nice. Uh, five fun guys. Yes, that's still uh, still in there. Um, that was controversial, but it's in there. Um, and, and like in the full context of the scene, uh, does not come off as a as, as a Gamergate reference, as a, which is what I know had originally been thought by some folks. Um, so is it still like Sticker Star? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah Sicaria, I talked about that earlier. So yes, uh, it is like Sticker Star in most ways. Huey the Paint Can, though, is not very bothersome. He keeps his mouth shut or his lid shut, as it were, ha, 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 uh, most of the time. So that's it, folks. Um, that's the most we can show you of this game until it comes out on Friday, whatever that is, October 6th or October 7th. So um, thank you all for watching. We will have more streams later in the week. Also, not gaming related, but um, if you're in America, please do your civic duty and pay attention to the election. Plan to vote in November. You've got a major debate to watch tonight. So I'm sure some of you probably already have your favorite person picked of the two people debating, but um, please keep an open mind, check it out, and hopefully our country is headed in a wonderful direction with this next election, right? Okay. All right, folks, back soon. See ya.